It's unbearably hot, uncomfortably bumpy, and unbelievably spectacular. Welcome to the Ethiopian desert, to one of the harshest, most inhospitable places imaginable. This is where the Afar nomads live. And our first encounter with them is a tense one. These men are still fighting other people around here. The, there is a conflict between Afar and Isa. The Afar people are under threat, including from nearby warring tribes. So assuring these men we're friend, not foe, is important. So this time of day, the, these men are out patrolling. They're making sure their village is protected. Uh, yeah, protect the village. A few hundred kilometres further on, and we're much closer to finding what we've come for. In these parts, Valerie Browning has an almost mythical presence. But out of the shimmering haze, that dazzle of bright orange and blue is very real. Valerie's a 59-year-old Australian woman with the energy of a teenager and the heart of a saint. Hello, Valerie. Hi, Michael. Is it Michael? It is. It's been quite a journey. Oh. Wow. Good to and see you here. Really, welcome. Welcome to Afar. Welcome to where we are, who we are. Thank you so much. So, Home so... for the Afar nomads is anywhere within this 500 kilometer swathe of northern Ethiopia, bordered by Djibouti and Eritrea. And for the last 25 years, this land has also been Valerie Browning's home. I'd love to have been born a nomad. I'd love to have been born living in an Afar house. Yeah, I think they have a great life. I really do. Where Valerie sees prosperity and hope, at first, all I see is poverty and neglect. But the small aid group she runs is helping save the Afar people by trying to conquer the worst of third world conditions. The greatest killers in Afar are malaria, definitely. <laughs> and then, of course, tuberculosis, diarrhea, Pneumonia, these are all big killers. Measles is a killer. How many children die? One in three die before they reach the age of five. One in three? One in three. Here, the basics we take for granted can never be guaranteed. It's often days between a solid meal, and the water, we wouldn't let our animals drink it. I wanted to ask you about this. I mean, what mm. the hell is this? This is their drinking water, Michael, and this is it. I mean, they it's don't mud. have another water. And as they say, it gives what they say, baggy asrat, which is terrific pain in the stomach. They have bloody diarrhea from it. It's just filth. Yeah, well, they've got nothing else. They've got nothing else. And when you think it can't get any tougher, remember the heat. Just how anything or anyone survives out here is beyond me. It's just so hot, at times it's hard to breathe. For a soft westerner like me, I reckon I'd be lucky to last a day on my own. On a hot day, the temperature soars to 60 degrees. 50, believe it or not, is about average this time of year, and they call that a fine day. You can see why the Afar are regarded as the greatest survivors. No other people live in such constant extreme heat anywhere on Earth. The Kamsin winds, when they hit, it's like, you know, it's burning the whole face, it's burning everything. It's like a furnace. It is, it's like a furnace, yes. So what's cold to you? 30 is okay, but below 30 is horrible. <laughs> Ethiopia is about as far away as you can get from where Valerie grew up, Armadale in country New South Wales. But in the early 70s, a friend convinced this young and naive nurse to go and help the poor in northern Africa. Over the next decade, she worked all over the region, but it was the plight of the Afar nomads which touched her most. And it still does. Are you worried about the future of the Afar people? Desperately worried. I think they are, for the world, an expendable people. Afar are on that list of becoming extinct. That must break your heart. 
It does, and that's the, oh, that's the main reason to fight on. We must fight on faster and harder because we must win, they mustn't become extinct. No one's exactly sure, but there are about a million Afar nomads. Their worldly possessions fit easily on the back of a camel. Their simple houses dot the landscape. Would that be kind enough to let us have a look inside their house? Around here, Valerie's no outsider, no missionary or Western do good. And this is, uh, these are uh, sticks which are made into a dome shape and tied together. She's well and truly embraced the Afar people and their way of life. This is what you like, your favourite. I love it, love it, love it, love it. I love camel milk too much. I don't know when to stop. <laughs> It's your Disgusting. indulgence, is it? <laughs> and where there's a far, there's always a friend and hospitality to be found. It doesn't get any better for Valerie than this, the great luxury of camel's milk. Michael, try. This is really And to be offered a taste stuff. is an honour you don't true. refuse. Literally fresh. This is a far beer. <laughs> <laughs> You've done it, you got it on the nose. There's one thing that strikes you about the Afar. For all their struggle to survive out here, they remain a happy, proud race of people. And when the word goes out, Valerie's got some guests in town, they come from everywhere to celebrate. It's here we meet Ismail a fine dancer, and Val's husband for the last 20 years. She does some amazing work out there that we've seen. Yes, yes, she is, uh, you know, the whole her life is work, whole her life to do something good. And this will be a nursing room? Nurses room. Truth is, um, Ismail and Valerie both do good work. This Muslim man and Christian woman make quite a team. Yes. Over the years, their organisation, the Afar Pastoral Development Association, has trained over 800 local teachers, nurses, and community workers. And while it's run on next to nothing, even out here in the middle of nowhere, the financial crisis has hit hard. One glove. That's not good. You should hope to. We're really up against the wall at the moment. Are you despondent by that or do you have hope? You can't be despondent. If you're despondent, then, then you know, that's where life finishes. Uncle Timothy is a king. This family, dad, mum, their toddler son and baby daughter, have walked for days to find Valerie. She's their only hope because their baby yeah. is dying. She's been sick since birth, according to them. Yeah. Come on, Aji. Hang in there, my love. Gail. Better hold on to you. So three, three, and a... 3.4. We say 3.4, yeah. that'll do. 3.4. But at eight months old, the baby should be two or three times this weight. Valerie organises some medicine, but more importantly, some food. It's good, uh, it's, it's excellent stuff. She's taking it. Yeah, she's taking it, she's taking it, she's taking it. She, she is, she she's is hungry. starving. She's hungry, yeah. In 2009, oh, to see a baby oh. so close to death because of a lack of food should make us all angry. But I just feel helpless. I just find this so upsetting to see, but you're right in there, you deal with it straight away. Yeah, because we've got it all the time. I mean, as I said to you the other day, you don't really in the West know what is death. We know it daily. While she spends much of her time looking after the Afar, she's also got another role, mum. Ramid is Valerie and Ismail's very active seven-year-old son. While on the other side of the world, the central coast of New South Wales, is their 18-year-old daughter, Aisha. I miss my parents, um, the people there, especially my friends. If we're thinking about a graph or graphing it... Earlier this year, Valerie and Ismail made a tough call, deciding Aisha should leave Ethiopia and finish her high school education in Australia. Hi, Mum. Just want to say that I really miss you and I hope um, work is going well. 
The separation has been painful for everyone, especially mother and daughter. I wish I was there, seriously, Mum. So, we were only too pleased to play video postman. Hi to everyone, especially Medina and Rami. Man nae Rami. In another world, isn't she? Thank you. I hope to see you soon. Love you guys. Bye. Wow, what a thing you brought me. My goodness. <sighs> it really stops you still to think of your own reality like that. I mean, I'm rushing today to speak to the Health Bureau, to speak to the government, and there's my daughter in front of me. Wow. For a woman who gives so much to the Afar people, oh it's touching to see Valerie Browning take a brief moment to think about her own family. Not that you'd ever hear any regret or complaint about what she's given up over the years. Doing your work here means incredible sacrifice on your heart, behalf, doesn't it? No, I don't agree with that. Not a sacrifice? No, not at all. It's a pleasure and an absolute privilege. I'm going to say, I think I've got a better life than you have. You and your children and your wife, OK? And I wish for you that you were here. So you think I'd find peace and happiness out here? Absolutely. Look, I've learnt what is poverty. I've learnt what is extreme difficulty. You didn't learn that. You haven't had that lesson. And you're deprived because of that. My dream is maybe a little five, six, seven goats. This is and your idea of heaven? This is it. This is it. Out here, retired. Yes! Retired one of here. those little houses Come on the hill. On. Me and the goats and that's it. I, that's what I really want. But not any time soon. She's too busy to slow down. As we parted, Valerie Browning was loading medicine onto a cranky camel and heading out to a remote Afar village. A day-long trek, on foot, in the unbearable heat. There is just no stopping this wonderful woman. I can do as fast as any man, I can do as fast as anybody, and I enjoy it. I can do 50, 60 kilometres a day and, and I'm all right. 50 or 60 kilometres a day? Yeah. 10, 12 hours walk a day is good. Who knows, I might die tomorrow. We can't be predicting anything. But I accept that too. But I hope I clean up a few messes in the office before I die. <laughs> Bit of work to do yet. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.